All right, this is study nine of our study in the letter to the Philippians. Today, we're going to be looking at chapter two, verse 19 to 24. Uh, but before we do that, we're going to answer the questions in chapter two, verse 12 to 18 from study eight. So question one was, what does it mean to work out your own salvation in, from verse 12 to 13? So we're going to cover quite a bit here to answer this question. I think it's important. Uh, but Paul is writing to saints in verse one, that the holy ones. Uh, people in whom God has begun and will complete a good work in chapter 1 verse 6. They are citizens of the gospel, chapter 1 verse 27, and they are saved, chapter 1 verse 28. So he's writing to Christians, people who are saved. These verses then are in no way stressing or saying that we need to work for or earn our salvation. And neither is verse 12 telling you to work it out as if it's some sort of math problem that you need to kind of come to understand. Um, it's saying something different from that. Now we know from chapter one, verse six, that it is God who's working in us and he's going to continue, he's begun this work and he's continuing this work in us. And we know from chapter one, verse 11, that it's Christ who's producing the fruits of righteousness in us. Okay, so it's Christ's fruit being produced uh, in us, in our lives. Chapter 2, verse 13 explains that it's God who's working in us mightily to bring out of us what is pleasing to him. So it's his mighty work in us bringing something out of us. Therefore, chapter 2, verse 12, this idea of working out your salvation is a challenge to cultivate the gospel work that God has done and is doing in you. Uh, to work out what God has worked in you and is continuing to work in you. God is doing a great work. He's begun a good, great work in your life of transforming you. He's continuing that work. And this uh, chapter 2, verse 12 is saying, work that out into your life, into your actions. I would encourage you to read Ephesians chapter 1, verse 19 to 20, Colossians chapter 1, verse 29, and 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 11. This is a big theme of Paul. Um, that God is working in us and we are able to then work that out into the way we live our lives. It's very beautiful. Uh, now question two, uh, what, was it, what does it mean to live as a child of God? Verse 14 to 15. Now the way to live as a blameless, harmless child of God who shines brightly in this world is to do all things without murmuring and without arguing. Uh, murmuring, grumbling, complaining is the first one. And disputing and arguing against each other is the second commandment in, in verse uh, 14 and 15 here. Now, this may not seem very dramatic to us at all, but it is because Paul has been speaking about being content throughout this letter so far. And he's going to continue that in chapter four as well. Now, this idea of not murmuring and not complaining, this is what it means to work out your salvation in verse 12. This is what it means to live as a child of God in verse 14. This is what it means to hold fast to the word of God in verse 16, to simply live a life without murmuring and without arguing against each other. It's the opposite side of the coin that Paul's already been speaking about in chapter one and chapter two. Uh, chapter one, verse 27 to 28, Paul uh, challenges us to be of one mind and one spirit striving together for the faith of the gospel together. Uh, chapter 2, verse 1 to 4, to be humble and to be one-minded and to be of one love and to seek each other's good. So again, to, to live in harmony and uh, good relationship with one another. And then here we have chapter 2, verse 14. It's the, it's the negative side of the same commandment, to not be murmuring against each other, to not be grumbling, to not be arguing and disputing. Um, so let me just ask, in light of that, when was the last time that you grumbled about something and when was the last time that you argued amongst yourselves. It's a challenge. Uh, the world is full of this and we are called and we are enabled to live free from this type of life. Um, now we like to pin the blame on others for lots of different attitudes that we have, lots of different uh, negative actions that we do. But imagine how different all your relationships would be like if you were truly content and truly joyful in Christ. Well, Paul is saying you don't have to imagine it because we are are free to live this life of free from murmuring, free from complaint, to be content and joyful in Christ, regardless of the scenario around us. And that's what it means to live as a child of God and to allow God's work in us to come out of us to simply be content. Uh, question three then was about Paul's example in verse 16 to 18. Now Paul has challenged us to put others before ourselves 
And he showed us how Christ was the ultimate example of that so far in this chapter. Here in verse 16 to 18, he describes how he has worked so hard and would readily and joyfully die and give himself completely for the spiritual benefit of others. So he's really living out uh, what he said so far in, in chapter two, as he's putting other people before himself and seeking the welfare of others, putting them before him. Now, we're in the questions for chapter two, verse 19 to 24. And just before we get to that, remember the commandment is in chapter two, verse one to four and verse 12 to 16, to, to live in unity, to live in joyful contentment, um, to seek others before you seek your own welfare and your own interest. Um, Jesus Christ has been an example of that in verse 5 to 11. And Paul has been an example of that in verse 16 to 18. Now we have Timothy and he is an example of that in here in verse 19 to 24. And so the question is simply this. It's only got one question for you. How does Timothy live out the commandments of chapter 2 verse 1 to 4? and the example of Christ in chapter two, verse five to nine. So we've been looking at this chapter, this idea of living in unity, of seeking each other's welfare, of um, yielding your own interests for the good of others. Christ has been an example of that. Paul has been an example of that. And now um, Paul is setting Timothy up as that example. So how is Timothy living up to that command and that example here in verse 19 to 24? God bless.